So now we can start balancing half reactions. And there's a couple ways to do this. We're going to do the half reaction method. Um, and what that really involves is all these steps, which look kind of intimidating at first, but you'll see that it's a very systematic way of doing it. The first one might take you a while, and then as you get faster and faster, as you go on and on and practice and practice and practice, you'll get a lot faster. So the first thing you could do is you, you want to check to see is an oxidation reaction actually happening, um, and the way you can do that is by assigning the oxidation numbers. I'm going to skip that part when we go through these because I'm giving you reactions where it's definitely in an oxidation um, reduction half reaction or oxidation redox reaction happening uh, then you want to split up the reactions into their oxidation and reduction half reactions so the way you're going to do that is you're going to look at so this here's your reaction you're going to look at these two things and say which reactant kind of looks like one of the products so this, these two both have manganese in them that's going to be one reaction and until you start balancing it unless you've already assigned the oxidation numbers you don't know which one's being oxidized or reduced um, and then these two will probably be a half reaction because they both have carbon in them. And so once you split them up into the half reactions, then you want to balance each half reaction. And we're going to balance in a very specific way, not our usual way of balancing, um, because we have a different type of reaction. It's a redox reaction. Electrons are being transferred. Um, we have, uh, so first thing you do is you're going to balance everything other than hydrogens and oxygens. Okay, and then we're going to balance oxygen by adding water. These are all going to be aqueous solutions. So we're going to, we're going to balance, however many, you can see that we have one oxygen in every water, right? So however many oxygens we have, that's how many waters we're going to add. Um, and then we'll balance the hydrogens by adding H+. So we're going to assume we have um, acidic conditions. So first we'll balance under acidic conditions, and then I'll show you how to change it if you have basic conditions. They have to tell you if it's acidic or basic. And by they, I mean me. I will tell you if it's acidic or if it's basic. So balance everything other than hydrogens and oxygens. Balance oxygens by adding water. Balance hydrogens by adding H+. And then you want to balance the charge. And this is usually the tricky part. If you're going to mess something up, it's going to be the charge here. You're going to balance the charge by adding electrons. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Um, make sure you pay attention to your coefficients. You'll see what I mean. And then, so that's balancing. You're going to do that for each of the half reactions. And then you're going to put it back together. You're going to multiply the half reactions by some number so that the electrons gained equal the electrons lost. So that's important. You want to make sure that the number of electrons gained equal the number of electrons lost. So if somebody's gaining two electrons, somebody else has to lose two electrons. Then you want to add the half reactions. Um, subtract things are the same on both sides. And then just double check. Make sure that your mass is balanced and make sure your charges are balanced as well. So this is a lot easier to do um, when you have an example. So here's our reaction. It looks like this. And so the first thing we want to do is split it up into half reactions. So I'm going to take the uh, manganese. Here we go. MnO4 minus on one side. Actually, let me put it closer to the middle. So we're going to add minus and Mn2 plus on the other. And then I'll do the other one in red. Um, we'll have C2O4 2 minus in CO2. So I split them up into their half reactions. That's the first step. All right. Now I want to balance everything other than hydrogens and oxygen. So I'll look at this manganese first. I have one manganese. I have one manganese. Done. And then I want to balance. So balance everything other than hydrogens and oxygens. Balance the oxygens by adding water. Okay. So I have four oxygens over here. So on the right side, I'm going to add four waters because each water has one oxygen. So now my oxygens are balanced. But when I added that water, I also added the hydrogens. So now I want to balance the hydrogens by adding H+. So I have four waters. Each water has two hydrogens. So four times two is eight. So I want to add eight H pluses on this side. All right, so pause. First thing we do is we balance everything other than hydrogens and oxygens. I had one manganese. I have one manganese. Don't skip that step. If you skip that step, everything else is going to be totally off, and you're, you're going to have to go back and try to figure out what the heck you did. Don't skip that part. So one and one, it's fine in this case. Balance everything other than hydrogens and oxygens. Balance the oxygens by adding water. All right, so I have four oxygens, so I added four waters. That I, When I added the water, I also added the H+. Plus, so I have eight H pluses. So I added Hs, so I added H+, plus on that side. Now you want to balance the charge. And as I mentioned before, the charge is sometimes the trickiest part. Uh, so let's look at our charge. On this side, I have eight H pluses. So that, that gives me a plus eight charge over here. And I have one of these with a minus one charge. So plus eight minus one gives me a plus seven charge on the, on the left side of the reaction. Over here, I have water is zero. Water's neutral. There's no charge on water. How do you know there's no charge on water? Because there's no charge on water. There's nothing written up there. 
this guy has a plus two charge. If I had more than one, then I would multiply by the coefficient, just like I did over here with the hydrogens. And that's a part that people mess up all the time, that you forget that you need to multiply by each of the coefficients. So one side has plus seven, the other side has a plus two charge. I want those to be the same. They don't have to be zero, they just have to be the same on both sides. So how do I make, so, so whoever's more positive, that's who you're gonna add electrons to because electrons are negative. So how many electrons do I need to add on the left here? Five electrons, because now I have like a minus five charge, plus seven, minus five, gives me a plus two charge overall, and now they're the same. So just to go through this again, I have a plus two charge on this side. I have plus eight, minus one, plus seven charge on the left. I want the charges to be the same. So whoever's more positive to the more positive side, I'm gonna add the negative things. I'm gonna add the electrons. So I added five electrons to bring the charge down to plus two. So now my charges are balanced on both sides here. I have a, yep. Great. Now, just looking at this, see how I gained electrons? This guy is gaining electrons, grr. That's the reduction half reaction right there. So MnO4, my, the Mn, this is, this is being reduced. That's being reduced. It's actually going from like a, a plus seven, I think, to a plus two. So it's good that, that charge, that oxidation number is going down. This is the reduction half reaction, which makes this guy the oxidizing agent, the oxidizing agent, okay because he is being reduced, so he's doing the oxidizing, so he must be oxidizing the guy down here. All right, let's leave that one alone for a minute, and we'll go to the next one. So, go back here. Balance everything other than hydrogens and oxygens. I have two carbons. I have one carbon over here, so I'm gonna put a two in front of there. Then I'm gonna balance the oxygens. I have four oxygens on this side. I have four oxygens on that side, so I don't need to add any waters. My oxygens are already balanced in this case. So I don't have any hydrogens I have to balance. So I balance everything other than hydrogens and oxygens. Balance the oxygens by adding water, but my oxygens are already balanced. And then we would balance the hydrogens by adding H+, but we don't have any hydrogens, so we're good here. So we can go right to the charge. This guy has a minus two charge, this guy has a zero charge. So I wanna add two electrons over here. Adding two electrons over here. Great, now my charges are balanced. Now notice how I gained electrons up here. I'm losing electrons over here. So this is the oxidizing half, the, the oxidation half reaction. And if carbon here is being oxidized, that means this guy is the reducing agent. So he is undergoing oxidation, which means he's doing the reducing, he's the reducing agent. All right, so that's enough with the agents. So we balanced both of the half reactions, and now we want to make sure that the number of electrons gained, oops, that's over here, equals the number of electrons lost over there. So if I'm gaining five and I'm losing two, I'm not really balanced. So what I want to do is multiply one or both of these reactions by some number to make them equal, to make those numbers of electrons gained and lost to be the same. So if I multiply this top, reaction by two, and I mean the whole reaction by two, and I multiply the bottom reaction by five. Does that make sense? Multiply this bottom one by five. Mm -hmm. Then my number of electrons gained and lost will be the same. So we can work that out. So now I have, running out of colors. <laughs> Let's see, um, if we did, uh, whatever, 10 electrons, 16 H pluses, to these guys, so I'm just multiplying everybody in this reaction by two. And eight H2Os, you can do that too. And then I'm gonna multiply everybody down here also by two. That's gonna make my number of electrons gained and lost to be the same. Now we can add them up. So everything on the left side of the arrow is gonna come down, um, add those together. Everything on the right side of the arrow, add those together. Um, so I have, from this top reaction, I have 10, 16, 2, and this guy too, this reactive 5. And then on the product side, I have this and this. Oh, I ran out of room, 10 electrons. All right, so I, found, I, I added everything up, that's the same. And now, um, 
or I added everything on the left, everything on the right. And now I'm going to look at things on the left and the right. And if there's anything that's exactly the same, I can cancel it. And your electrons should always cancel. I am gaining 10 ele electrons. I'm losing 10 electrons. Those are done. The, the other things that sometimes cancel are your hydrogens and your waters. And so you want to check those. In this case, since that second reaction, we didn't have to add any H pluses or waters, then we're fine. So our, this is our final answer here. Whoops. There we go. You can always go back and check the charge. So we have like a plus 16, minus 2, minus 10 on one side, and that should be the same as uh, plus 4, just plus 4. <laughs> so this is plus 16 minus, yep, plus 4, plus 4. So I just did a final check of the charge, and that looks good. You can also double check all of your elements and everything else if you want to do that. Usually if the charge works out, you're fine.